Okay, say that again. <laughs> Cleavers. Cleavers. Gallium aparini. Um, and somebody's going to ask this, I know, so let me talk about it real quickly right now. Somebody's going to say, well, how would you take this? How do you how do you take the herbs, right? And that's a, that's the entire class on itself. But let me give you just a five-minute five, five overview. You can take herbs in a variety of ways, sometimes uh, sometimes more than others, sometimes in, in, in more ways than others. In other words, sometimes you want to take over fresh. It's better that way. Sometimes dried is actually better because it might have some, some alkaloids or some toxins in there that need to dry out or it's just too, too toxic. Uh, this is an example of one we can take fresh. Now you can take it fresh in the sense that you can just eat it straight off, you know, off the ground. If, you know, that's I guess the most primitive and yet most uh, natural way. But another way we can take it is we can dry it, or, and we can then we can store it that way for longer. Because if we just took this, picked it up, obviously you know it's got a lot of water content in it, right? It'll get moldy. It'll get get uh, wilted. And so we dry it, and we dry it in the shade. We don't pick things that have been dried in the sun and been blasted by UV. We can dry it and put it in an airtight container, and we can, we can preserve it that way and store it that way. Whether it's dried or fresh, depending on what we know about the plant and how to prepare it, we can tincture it and put it in alcohol or put it in vinegar or put it in glycerin. It's called a glyceride, but it's the same. It's a tincture, basically, where we try to absorb as much of the constituents out of that plant as we can. And then once we've done that, um, there you go. I thought you were trying to hit me there. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Sam. Um, so once we've done that, then we can. Then it's a convenient way to be able to store and take and, and you know and, and give the, the medicine. Um, there's many other ways. We can put it in oil and, and tincture it through that way and put it on our skin, or we can put a beeswax in it and make it a salve to make it more convenient that way. We can put it as we can inhale it as steam. We can, uh, you know, so many many ways to 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 take the herb. We're all most familiar probably with this, with what we call an infusion or taking it as a tea. We could do that with fresh or dried herbs sometimes, depending on what we're taking. With cleavers, I tincture it fresh, and the uh, the way that I and I think it's much more potent that way. And uh, the way that you tincture something fresh, the best way to do it in my opinion is just to take a, it's called a simpler method, and you just take a bunch of herb, and you'll say we got a quart mason jar, and you just cram as much as you can possibly cram into there, and then you pour your alcohol in. Now, different herbs take different percentages of alcohol, but it's not, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be exact on that a lot of times. And so, with a lot of herbs that are very water soluble, like this 30%, 40% alcohol, the cheapest alcohol you can get out there is Russian vodka, right? They know how to make it cheap. So, we do that, and so you can do that and pour it in there. And so, you basically cram that mason jar full, pour in the alcohol over the top of it until you're filled up to, to the tip. Then, that way, you've measured how much alcohol more or less you're going to need. Take the whole thing, dump it in a blender or Vitamix or whatever, blend it up really good, pour it back in the mason jar, and then top up with the rest of the alcohol because you'll you'll you know expand the surface area by grinding down the plant and you'll have more room for alcohol. So that's that's it. And then from there you just take it and shake it up a couple times a day and let it sit for three or four weeks, strain it off, and then you've got your, your tincture. The more that you can pack in there, of course, the more herb material you have. Now if you have time, with this particular one, I actually it's an edible too, and we use it a lot around the school and, and at home and what I'll do if I have time is I'll take them when they get really big because they can get really long here and just scrape off the leaves and the leaves are medicine and then the, the stems I'll take and freeze like like spaghetti noodles and then you cook them like spaghetti noodles and they're really good so uh, and the stems don't really have a lot of medicinal you know uh, uh, content to them anyway the leaf is what we mostly want for medicine so now the, the cleavers is a very gentle medicine on that spectrum I drew they're much closer to the power food you could just eat these raw if you needed to, if you wanted to, as food. I mean, there's caloric content to them, not much. There's definitely, they, they have a lot of nutritional, uh, you know, mo like most wild foods are fairly nutrient dense, micronutrients. But what we use it for is it's a mild lymph stimulator. That's what I use it for. It's for other things too, but a mild lymph stimulator, um, also mild diuretic, you know. So a lot of times when you stimulate the movement of lymph in your body for to stimulate your immune system. Oh, or lymph. Lymph. Okay. Your lymph. In other words, your I thought you were talking about so, Viagra or something. Okay. No, not Viagra. Just Sorry. A, as far as I know, at least I've never had that effect. But. I mean, maca is really good for that, but go ahead. <laughs> so, uh, so we're talking about the lymph. So everybody knows if you get sick, you get swollen lymph nodes, right? That's the lymph, the immune system. It's an offshoot, depending if you're looking at it from a Western medicine standpoint, it's kind of almost considered an offshoot of the circulatory system, but it is its own system. Our body is made up of compartments of fluids that, that move throughout those compartments, and lymph is one of those very important compartments. So, the thing is that lymph doesn't move on its own very well. It doesn't have a pump like the, like the heart pumping the circulatory system. It doesn't have that. It's almost more, you can think of it as a hose with valves in it. 
And so what moves the lymph is skeletal muscle, and mainly, especially, diaphragmatic breathing. So muscle moves the lymph. So that's one thing. But another thing that we can help to stimulate the move, uh, lymph movement is actually plants. There's some different plants, medicinal plants, that do that. So this is kind of what we would consider more on the gentle tonic side of the lymph mover. It's also a gentle diuretic. And if we're moving lymph, we're breaking up things that are in our lymph and our immune system, breaking them up, and they end up back in our bloodstream and, and end up being excreted through a urine usually. So we need a gentle diuretic whenever we move the lymph. It kind of rounds the whole thing off. We're doing that, that whole that pathway of excretion, that pathway of elimination. And so this is a gentle way. And I usually use this in a formula with stronger lymph movers, to it, but it's a counterbalancer and it's more of a tonic. What are some of the other lymph? Uh, poke root is one of my favorites, but but I use that in a small amount. It's up near the poison end of that spectrum. Also, blue flag, also near the poison end of that spectrum. You have to be careful. Red root is another one that's about in the center of that spectrum. And then cleavers. Um, also, I usually use immune boosters with that, like an echinacea or bone set that increase the white blood cell count. So we're really activating, and also they increase the actual activity of the macrophages. So we're, act, we're really stimulating the immune system on all levels, the innate immune system, even the adaptive, our T cells. We're, we're stimulating all aspects of that and we're trying to increase the flow. And then we're trying to increase the excretion of, of toxins and such out of our body. So you'll find lymph movers are used a lot of times in coordination with what we would call blood cleansers or liver, liver movers. So liver, lymph, skin is a pattern you find a lot with people with skin problems, eczema and, and allergies and stuff. You'll find you can work with the liver first and then the, the lymph help the lymph help, helps break that down. It takes the stress off a lot of the cellular stuff that's going on, especially with our, our poor, you know, really epidemic bad diets that we have in America. Uh, most of our problems in America are problems of excess in a first world environment. Whereas you go to some place like remote Nicaragua and they're mostly deficiency more, you know, related diseases. So um, this is very gentle, but it's a very good one to have in the medicine cabinet, I, I think. So. Yeah. And also we have another very fine herbalist in our crowd, and that's Ellen Zimmerman. So if you have anything to add to any of this, okay. feel free. I don't want to put pressure on you, but you know, if you have anything to add, <laughs> please do. Okay. So.